What's going on guys? I'm gonna take you through a day in my life as a New York City carnivore. And although I live in one of the boroughs and usually commute in and out of the city, we will still go down to the city today. But um, let's get started with, oh, I'm laying down on my bed because the lighting is, you see, you know, let's see. like the lighting's terrible when I'm, actually it's not that bad. Uh, but I got our retainers in still. Uh, I guess I could show you guys how I slept so I don't have to later. Uh, this is a just a night mask. Uh, I got a sleep mask on my Amazon uh, shop. Same with the earplugs. These are like 200 sets for like, I don't know, $15. So, you know, you could use clean ones every night. And I sleep on a fresh towel every night to prevent my acne. Uh, and these are also some some blue light blocking glasses that I use. So let's go show you guys my uh, makeup routine, huh? There's a bunch of comedians, I swear to God. It's yeah, like my uh, my mugging outfit. <laughs> Fits perfect for where I used to live. Okay, so. New camera guys investing, right? Investing, okay, so. All right, take my retainers out. I just give them a quick rinse off. If I had two hands, I would uh, scrub them with the brush. Uh, usually, I, I do brush my teeth in the morning when I wake up, but we're new, I'm gonna do something unusual. I'm gonna eat early today. So we'll brush them after, but uh, water pick, electric toothbrush, water pick guys, if you, if you don't have one, if you've never used one, this is amazing. Uh, tongue scraper, dental brush for everything else. Uh, this is the, the toothpaste that I make, and this is the deodorant that I make. Uh, I don't actually have my lip balm and my uh, my soap and stuff up here. Uh, that stuff is in my apartment. Uh, this is my parents' house. I don't have everything up here. Um, and then here, just, I just have a straight razor to shave with and some scissors to trim my wacky eyebrows. So. Uh, first part of my makeup routine is I take a wet rag and I wipe my face. And uh, then I let my face air dry and that's it. There's my makeup. So uh, I do have to comb my hair today because um, I'm going on an interview later for an upscale restaurant. It's funny, I actually went on an interview for yesterday for a different restaurant and I got the job with this hair. So uh, go figure, definitely have to uh, jazz it up a little bit this time. I knew I was filming this video so I came up to my parents' house early but uh, normally I wouldn't have to like do anything outside of my normal day today until later. Uh, usually I go up to my parents' house, take care of my sister for a little bit, cook for her. Uh, do, do other things. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, my sister isn't 100%. Uh, but my mother actually doesn't have breakfast today, so I'm just going to make her something real quick. But before that, I'll show you guys. I made this awesome Italian bread from einkorn wheat. Um, take a look at that. Looks like Italian bread, right? This is 100% einkorn sourdough. It, ha it has a whole wheat, so I'm going to try the... I'm gonna try a sprouted wheat version and see what the taste difference is. Uh, that video will be up, hopefully within a couple weeks. Uh, I just don't know when I'm gonna publish it with my current schedule. Here I just have some batagra I was making yesterday, still marinating in olive oil and salt. Stuff is way too salty. Like, I taste, it's just so salty, I don't even think I'm gonna eat it. Um, I bought some flounder row for like $2 a pound at the fish market, and uh, I probably gotta buy some more because um, that does not taste so good. Way too salty. So this is gonna be my Eskimo breakfast, or bear breakfast, however you have it. I got a bowl of fish roe, fish eggs. And I got some salmon that I cooked last night on the grill. And that's what we're gonna have. Uh, that should be plenty, the salmon's very fatty. Um, <clears throat> I guess we could do some, get some hydration ready. 
So this is reverse osmosis water that I usually hydrate with every morning. Okay. Uh, if you guys want to see more on that, check out my electrolytes video on water. Definitely long 25 minute talk on electrolytes. I just thought an interesting comparison was, this is like, this is my mother's breakfast and this is a naturally fermented einkorn sourdough bread with raw farm butter, some raw pastured eggs, uh, well, cooked scrambled pastured eggs with some raw cheese and a little bit of butter mixed in there too. So this is like this super approachable, healthy, modern diet for someone that doesn't have a bunch of allergies or like weird uh, dietary constraints. But I just thought that it was cool that both of these foods, you know, scrambled eggs with naturally fermented bread and high quality fat uh, versus what I'm eating are essentially achieving the same goal of removing inflammation and increasing the nutrient density of the diet. But that's not what I'm having. All right, so I got my sea salt here for the salmon. I usually, sometimes I salt it, sometimes I don't. Um, the flounder roe is unsalted. And this flounder roe is, uh, it's caviar. And the, the eggs are so tiny though, it looks like soup. Um, this can be made into caviar if you salt it. It can be made into batarga if you leave it in the skines and you cure it. There's a bunch of different things you could do. I got it for very cheap from the New Fulham Fish Market because I bought it in bulk. Uh, but, it, you know, usually they throw it out, so to speak. But Guys, this tastes different every day. Like, from day one to day three, it's tasted drastically different every time. Definitely tastes um tastes weirder and weirder as it goes on. So normally fish roe is like it's sweet, it's nutty. Flounder roe, not as sweet as like salmon roe. But the goal is still very, very high nutrient density. And the reason I eat fish roe is because this is literally like the food that indigenous people used to feed to their pregnant woman, their nursing woman, uh, when they were going to conceive, like the couples. Uh, this was because of its nutrient density and they believed, uh, really believed in it. And we don't really see the same thing for the, like the smelt or the, the sperm of the male fish. We don't really see men consuming that for any reason in indigenous groups, or at least I haven't, maybe there's an example, but... Uh, from a scientific standpoint, fish roe has every single vitamin there is. All the fat soluble and water soluble vitamins, minerals, elements. It has everything you need in your body to live. You could literally only eat fish roe and bread and be perfectly healthy. A, D, E, K, B, C, uh, all the minerals, all the elements, iodine. And why fish roe is the healthiest food is because it has way more DHA than any food that exists. Even compared to this wild uh, salmon, or well, this is Faroe Island salmon, which is the highest quality farm salmon, but um, even compared to very, very high omega-3 salmon, DHA blows it out of the water in the fish row. It's not even close. Uh, and, and then like brain tissue might be a, a close comparison, but nothing really beats, uh, nothing really beats the fish row. So let me get a little, have a little piece here with the salmon. This is good cold. I like this a lot, actually, cold. This is how the Eskimos would have eaten a lot of their fish. The Eskimos ate their fish uh, primarily boiled. So they'd have it, they'd boil it in the afternoon or whatever. They'd eat some, usually after it cooled to room temperature. And then 
they would wait a couple hours. Sometimes they'd have raw fish. A lot of times they'd have fermented fish, like fermented uh, fish. They'd just let the fish rot and they'll have that like frozen, almost like ice cream. But then they'll have the cold fish later. Um, that's one thing they really liked. Uh, just to touch more on the salmon, this is Faro Island. It's the Scottish salmon. I still have a, a, a little bit, a little bit of reservations about the quality of this. I still worry about the uh, potential pollution factors of the fish, but I only ordered 40 pounds of it. <laughs> uh, no, I got like 50 pounds for six dollars a pound. Uh, they, you know, they do everything on it. They fillet it for you. I didn't have to do any work, but I'm gonna do this for like a week and a half, two weeks. Uh, just to see how it affects me um, But I could tell like how unnaturally fatty this salmon is and it's I mean it is king salmon, but You know, I still do have reservations about the quality. So it's definitely not something I would incorporate into my diet frequently Although it's delicious and Like grain-fed beef has an off taste to it to me, but this doesn't I usually I eat this like raw in the middle. Sometimes I like it cooked a little more. And all the indigenous peoples had a similar preference. They liked their meat like red or pink in the middle. I used to do sushi. I used to do the um, the coconut aminos, like the uh, the fermented coconut tree sap, and uh, but I haven't done that lately. High in histamine, I usually break out from it. I really do like black pepper, though. I'm just not using it right now because I cut my hand open and I can't even use the mill <laughs> without opening the cut again. I'm actually not really hungry anymore. I mean, guys, I wasn't hungry before this meal. <laughs> I'm just eating because I know I need calories. I mean, the fish row is so satiating. I guarantee you, you have a few tablespoons of fish eggs in the morning. You will not want anything else to eat. Wild salmon was out of season though, if you guys didn't know that. Also, I know a lot of you guys were asking about salmon roe, but there was a bad season this year, so I know a lot of you guys are having a hard time getting some salmon roe. 
I couldn't get any myself. That's why I got the flounder roll. I'm really not hungry, so I'm not going to eat anymore. I ate maybe like half a pound of salmon. A couple tablespoons of roe. Leave this out for later. So what's the game plan, Frankie boy? Alright, let's tell you guys. Uh, it, it's really nice out today like it was yesterday. So I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna get like an hour or two of sun. Probably just tan my face because um, my face tends to get lighter than my body. Uh, <laughs> um, so it's actually, I mean, I've been up for about an hour and a half and it's already almost 11 o'clock so uh, we can go outside in like half an hour and just get an hour or so of sun, hour or two of sun. But I have to, uh, there's an open call today in Manhattan for a restaurant for uh, some front of house staff. So I got to be down in Manhattan for two o'clock. Uh, there is an open call before that too, but we'll see. I'd rather get an hour extra sun than go on. Because I know I, I wouldn't want to work at that place if I got the job there, uh, most likely. So I'm like, what's the point of even going on the interview? Uh, but who knows, I might just go a little beforehand for a little practice, but uh, it's, it is Friday, so uh, driving into and out of Manhattan on Friday is, I got I chose a good time, um, pretty much afternoon, early afternoon, uh, should only take about an hour each way, hopefully, but um, I'll show you guys, when I, when I go to 10, I'll show you guys my setup, all I'm going to do now is, um, Probably gonna go. Uh, am I gonna comb my hair yet? Maybe not. I'm just gonna take a sip of um. Just take a sip of the clay water. All right, so I'm gonna go upstairs. I'm gonna brush my teeth. I, I'm gonna floss. Use the water flosser. Um, brush my teeth with my own toothpaste. That I can't tell you guys. I gotta. I gotta find out how to produ make production for my hygiene products. So we'll do that, clean up, then we'll come back down and I'll show you guys how I usually tan uh, for about an hour or two. If it's ever like a super nice day outside and I'm off, I always go out and I try to get an hour or two of sun. So uh, for those of you guys that didn't watch my Look Like a Greek God video where I talk about vitamin D3, the sun and everything, there's a certain time of the year where the UV index are the strongest and then that's usually in like June, end of June, July. And then the rest of the year, they're not that strong. They're not really, uh, you know, you have to be outside for a very long period of time. And at some points of the year, like the winter, there's no real UV exposure at all. At this time right now, uh, late October, it's pretty much where we can kind of still get a little bit of vitamin D3 and uh, maybe a slight tan. But for the most part, it's just maybe a little bit of vitamin D3. So uh, it's about 1130 right now. Solar noon is anywhere between like usually 12:30 and 1:30. So, if you want to get the most bang for your buck, you want to time your sun exposure around that time slot. So today I'm gonna probably let uh, just I gotta go down for that interview at like um, I probably gotta leave at like 12:45 to get there for 1:45. Uh, so I'm only gonna I'm just gonna get some sun on my face for an hour. I don't really want to get any uh, full body exposure because the rest of my body's tan enough. And uh, if I don't do this, usually I'll just go to the tanning salon later. But uh, what else about vitamin? This this is like this is one super important aspect to health that people don't care about or don't do, and even just going to like getting taking a D3 supplement, going to the tanning salon, that's good. But when you physically get three four hours of sun a day, 
in the spring, early summer, get your vitamin D3 stores off. It's super important. And you want your blood levels of vitamin D3 to be minimum 40 nanograms per liter because that's where your body starts storing for the winter. So if you're not at 40, then you're not, you know, you're, you're deficient pretty much. Your body's using whatever it can get. So um, I'm gonna lay out here. Uh, if, if you guys wanna know more about vitamin D3, check out my Greek God video. Uh, look into how to get your levels up. Look into foods that you could eat, like the fish row is probably the best source of vitamin D3 you can consume. And, and for me, this is one of the big elements. The sun, uh, in addition to diet, exercise, and water, are what make us truly healthy. So uh, definitely check out the Greek God vitamin D3 video. A lot of information there. Um, but look how nice it is outside, guys. Beautiful October sunny day. Actually, you know, the clouds are blocking a little bit, but the rest of the sky is mostly clear, so. I'll be out here for about an hour, and then uh, we're gonna go inside and get ready and uh, head down to Manhattan. All right, guys, got about half an hour of sun. Uh, I'm actually gonna go, I'm gonna get some food, get it prepped, because I think I wanna have uh, some sashimi tonight. I don't, I'm gonna have the salmon raw instead of uh, cooking it again. I just feel like like I'm eating too much, so uh, if I just eat raw, reduce the palatability, uh, it'll satiate me better, less less food volume in my stomach. So this is uh, the salmon's down here, and this is a mess. I gotta clean that up. That looks like it's leaking pretty bad. Uh, this is some lamb fat that's just aging up here. I'm gonna actually move this some of this down here. This lamp fat, some of this has been in here for like two weeks. This smells really funky. Like it's getting really dry aged, umami flavor fermenting. Um, this could stay in here indefinitely pretty much. You could just let it like dry age, essentially rot uh, for like two, three months. Might even get some mold on it. The only important thing is that it doesn't stay wet on the outside. If it stays wet, it's going to get uh, a little moldy. It might spoil a little bit. I don't know why this is... Uh... So this should continue to dry out. These pieces look good. Smell a little funky. Definitely getting funky. Been there for about three weeks now, I think. The salmon. We've got a mess over here. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's leaking. Uh, but hopefully when I run out of salmon, I can clean this up pretty easily. This is um, this is just some trim with uh, the head in the bag. I think this bag is like two fillets, three fillets. So then we'll bring this bag upstairs and we'll put this in the fridge upstairs. Yeah, this is I think two fillets. All right, so let's take out one of these. Put this in the, hey, let me double bag this and I'll put it back in the fridge. So I'm gonna have the, um, you guys see this pretty well? I'm gonna have the, the belly, the fatty part first. I'm gonna cut it. And that's what we'll have for sashimi tonight. The belly on this fish, sometimes the farm fish is so fatty. You could literally peel it off with your finger like this. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Oh. I think that's enough for tonight. Right? Maybe about a pound of raw salmon. Okay, I'm just gonna go upstairs, comb my hair, take a quick shower, and then we are heading down to Manhattan for an interview. All right, guys, I'm going to head out to Manhattan now. Hopefully, I'm there before they start the open call and be nice and early. Um, I've been reading about the PCBs and even in the Scottish salmon, so I think I'm actually just going to uh, cut my losses and get rid of it. And we'll go back to eating the ruminant stuff because 
although it doesn't seem like it tastes too off it's definitely not right and uh, the fat content doesn't seem good and I'd rather you know lose $200 in salmon than uh, consume very high carcinogen salmon uh, for the next week or two downside of fish guys unfortunately the larger fish the farm fish you don't really know what you're getting until you get it I would not have fucking driven I would not have driven down here if I knew I was gonna be sitting in my car for like an hour and a half each way um, I mean I left my house like an hour ago and my GPS still says it's gonna take about half an hour to get there so um, you know I apparently I don't learn my lesson driving down into Manhattan on a Friday just for a stupid open call interview so um, but I guess I, I just like wanted to talk about like my thoughts well, since I'm sitting in my car anyway. So, uh, you know, although in my last day of, well, I did a New York City Day in the Life uh, last week or whenever I published it before this. And it's a, it was actually the day before this. So uh, I was eating the salmon only for about a couple days. And uh, I know I said I, like, I went on an interview. They said they offered me the job. But I haven't really heard back from them yet, so I'm not 100% sure that I have a job. That's why I'm going on this open call still. Uh, the only other thing is that, you know, yeah, that, that farm salmon, uh, you know, unfortunately I am at about $200 worth of food. But, uh, you know, maybe this time I'll learn my lesson and stop buying uh, fish from down there. Uh, you know, whether it's farmed fish, like I, like I knew that. You know the the farm the farm stuff is really bad for you, but the guy said, "Oh no, it's wild. They farm at Faroe Islands." And then I it took a lot of actually digging to find out that that Faroe Island farm salmon um, isn't really much better than uh, you know the the regular farm salmon that people talk about the PCBs, the toxins, and all that stuff. So the problem is even eating wild salmon for like a week or two would be an issue, let alone uh, something like that. So unfortunately. Uh, you know, we're going to go on this interview, maybe we'll film like a quick shot in the city after the interview, and then um, then we're going to go to the supermarket, pick up something to eat, go home, get some food in my stomach. I kind of want to try to push that salmon out of my system as fast as possible. I noticed I've been having like a mucus reaction to consuming it, so uh, there's definitely some something negative in the salmon that I, I shouldn't be having. But um. Uh, hopefully the I guess you know I'll, I'll let you guys know how the interview goes after this. Um, no, it's just unfor it's unfortunate how like polluted our food is now that um, that we have to uh, you literally almost can't eat fish anymore. Uh, but I don't really like fish that much anyway, so go figure. But anyway, I'm gonna sit in my car for another half hour. Hopefully we'll get there. Um, do the open call. Hopefully that doesn't take too long. Probably not going to be home until it's like well two o'clock right now. Uh, probably won't be home until uh, like four or five o'clock. Uh, go figure. Another day. If it's not a normal day if I don't spend three hours on my car, guys. I'm telling you, I ate too much uh, Vaseline on my lips. All right. So the interview was not too bad. I'm gonna head back up. Uh, I'm gonna go to the store. We're gonna buy some steaks, but unfortunately, because uh, we just threw out all that salmon, uh, get something to eat, uh, do some cooking on the grill, and uh, I did just check my email. I actually got the job offer from the other place, so uh, I won't really have to worry about this too much. And um, uh, especially considering the location, the business, it is for a very good restaurant group, but I'll have to think about it. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem is, like, this place up by me that I got a job offer at is only, like, it's, like, half an hour away, and I was going to say, it's, it's saying it's going to take me an hour and a half to get home. So, guys, I will see you after I lose my mind sitting in my car for another hour and a half. So, that was pretty bad. It took me, like, um, about an hour and 45 to get out of the city. That was really bad. So, uh, not too happy, but, um, you know, I was just noticing, like, everyone in their car looks so unhappy. Everyone looks so unhealthy. I saw this one woman that looked like a goddamn witch, like with the holes in her skin. Uh, I saw this one girl looked like she was falling asleep at the wheel with like the, the facial structure. You know, I just, everyone I look around, especially up, up here a little north of the city is like, 
Uh, I just notice it every day, and it's and it's more apparent when like I'm in a bed, I'm in the same mood as everyone else. Usually, I'm in a pretty good mood, but uh, when I'm in like the rush hour traffic with everyone else, and I see how unhappy and sad everyone is, I'm like. Uh, you know, there's got to be more life than this, even if it's just me doing it for myself and then maybe my family in the future. But um, on a more positive note, uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to buy some steaks in this local supermarket. Uh, I actually am going to do a, I, I'm going to order some from my meat purveyor for tomorrow. But the delivery isn't going to come until tomorrow morning, so uh, maybe I'll show that in another video. I don't know how. Um, we'll figure that out down the line. Maybe, I, I kind of like these vlog, this vlog style stuff because... I can just show you guys a bunch of different stuff uh, that's going on in my life at the moment. So, um, but anyway, that's what we're gonna do: pick up the steaks, cook, eat some dinner. Uh, then I gotta film some videos for my website. Uh, then maybe uh, I'll show you guys how to make the bread in this video. I'll show you guys how to make it because I don't know when I'm gonna publish or if I'm gonna publish that sourdough bread video. And then I'll go to um, then we'll go to the gym. Maybe we'll go to the tanning salon. And I'll see how much time I have. I'm not doing any more. I'm not doing a ton of food prep today, guys. I've spent like two, three hours every day for the past week cutting up fish roe, cutting up fish, doing something, making risotto, whatever it is. I'm not doing it today. All right, maybe I'll just a little bit today. All right, guys, so I got some shoulder blade lamb chops uh, at the supermarket, and I brought up some of those slabs of lamb fat I had in my fridge. Let's uh, go outside and get my grill warmed up, and then we'll cook this, we'll eat. All I usually do. I get two fairly thin pieces of dried hardwood. Turn the gas on. This is actually, I had some old grates that broke, so I put those grates on the burners so I could lay wood on top of the burners. And then the this is just a really easy way to get a nice hot wood fire within like five minutes. A little impatient today, so I didn't really wait for the fire to warm up well enough. Um, the lamb fat, I just usually throw it on first. The nice thing about it being really, really dry is that it gets crispy. It can also burn really quick. So this is gonna be definitely be at least two meals. That's usually pretty good. Uh, sometimes I go a little longer. I just don't want to burn it. Um, the main concern is losing water-soluble vitamins in meat. In fat, you don't really lose too many fat-soluble vitamins from heating it too much. It's just whatever fat renders off is what you're losing, pretty much. You know what? I was gonna throw out all that salmon. I'll just feed it to the cat that keeps coming by that my mom keeps feeding. Boy, will he have a treat. Toxic Scottish salmon. I'll tell you guys if the cat's dead in like a week or two. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm looking for, like nice crispy lamb fat. See, the reason I put the fat on the fire first is because it gets the fire really going when the fat renders down onto it. The fire really going, is that what I said? Now I'll throw my lamb chops on.
thinking like, Frank, why are you wearing your dress shirt? Take your shirt off before you grill. I want to smell like a campfire for my next interview. Try not to cook the meat for more than a minute on each side because I prefer it blue rare. Just get some flavor from the wood fire and that's it. I do have some more fish row here, but uh, maybe I'll just have that later. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna have that now. I'll have it with my second meal later, or third meal today. So, I'm gonna do a little black pepper today, and then just the salt I was using earlier. As New York City, we, we put a lot of black pepper on our steaks. That's like our thing. A ton of black pepper, every steak. And uh, the temperature on this lamb is, is blue rare. You can see it's raw in the middle. Forgot, I'm gonna eat the fat first. So the lamb fat, I just put a bit of salt on it. And it's really just pure fat. You know, it's rendered fat on the outside, little raw on the inside. This is so good.
I really can't explain how good this lamp pad is, guys. It's like nutty, it's sweet, it's like comparable to dry aged steak. Not really hungry anymore. Something to be said about eating fat first. And this is like an order of satiety thing that I've talked about a lot. It's something I've noticed personally when I started making like this, um, this ice cream that was pretty much pure fat. And I noticed how much it satiated me. It must have been about a year ago. I really taste the funk on this. It's almost like cheese. Really good. This piece is a bit funkier, you can really taste it. not fat for me. So eat the fat first. Make sure you're not hungry for any more fat. Then you move on to either organs or lean meat. Uh, but guys, I really, like, I'm not hungry. Like, I don't have, I could stop eating if I want to. Like, I don't have to eat any more. I'm hoping that eating more will warm me up, though, when it gets colder out.
I kind of like, um, kind of like gnaw on the bones a bit. <clears throat> Man, that pepper. Holy shit. This lamp isn't that good. It might have been grain fed actually. Um, I mean, usually they only sell the Australian lamb, but who knows. That lamb, the lamb fat is good. It's uh, definitely from Australia, grass fed, but this lamb shoulder chop isn't that good. So guys, even though everything here looks cooked on the outside, it's it's 100% raw in the middle. So it digests is pretty much like 90% of raw food. You guys want to look at um, all of the salts I use in my various uh, meals. All the salts are on my Amazon shop in the description below. There's um, a bunch of French salts. Fleur de sel is the, my favorite one.
Mm, yeah, that's cool. We'll eat about half the lamb chops now, and we'll save half for the other meal. Some of you guys might be thinking, well, Frank, is there, you know, what's the nutrient content of this? You're not really eating a lot of organ meats this meal. You know, the point that I buy high quality for everything, fat, muscle, everything, is that it has a decent amount of fat soluble vitamins regardless of what I'm eating. So even if I'm only eating muscle meat and fat, there's at least a decent amount of vitamins A, E, and K, as well as small amounts of vitamin C, all the minerals, plenty of omega-3s that I need. Fat being primarily for energy and of course vitamins. Organ meats being for vitamins and like overall, I mean organ meats really overall metabolic function, immune system function. And then the protein is just the extra minerals and of course the protein that your body needs. This is what happens when you guys make me eat salmon for three days. I end up eating like four pounds of lamb at once. <laughs> You guys are wondering like, Frank, how do you eat so much when you're not a, that big of a guy? You know, you're 140 pounds. Well, imagine you have a decent lean body mass and you don't sleep for three days. <laughs> Your body might want a bit more calories to recover if it hasn't slept for three days. Uh, I don't look bad though, right? Eh?
You guys might think I ate a lot, but that's about a pound and a half of meat and three quarters of a pound of fat. Uh, not really too much. Uh, there's just a lot of bones and a lot of waste on those lamb chops. I should have just bought something else. I didn't realize there was that much bones and weight. But what are you going to do? Guys, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna leave this out. The rest of this out for later. I don't think I'm... I might go buy another steak just to cook for later. I don't know. Maybe I won't. But, um... I'm going to show you guys how to make that bread real quick. And then I have to film some videos for my channel. So this is sprouted einkorn whole grain flour. I've also done this with unsprouted regular all-purpose flour. It even says it on here. Modern wheat was bred for higher yields and stronger gluten. Einkorn stayed true to nature with less carbohydrates, more protein, amino acids, vitamins. It's pretty much a, a less inflammatory version of wheat for people that don't want to... They just can't stop eating bread like my dad. So that's why I'm making this. First, we need 160 grams of our base mother starter. And what this is, it's it's yeast essentially. So you let flour and water sit out uh, in a jar for about two weeks. And I'm putting a little extra starter in here because this is really wet. But you let flour and water sit out for about two weeks and the wild yeast in the air start fermenting it. You guys can see the bubbles. And different starters have different flavors, like an, an einkorn starter would be different uh, than a whole grain starter. Like, uh, like this starter would be different than that starter. Like the yeast would taste different. So now we need 400 grams of flour. And if you guys have never like smelled freshly milled flour, it's amazing. It's like nutty. It's almost sweet. I just made a giant mess. But, uh, you know, what, flour is originally, you know, the berry on top of the wheat grain. So it needs to be milled in a very, it's a very laborious process to say the least. And now we have to add 230 grams of water. Made a little bit under because that starter was wet. Ah, oh, 230, that's fine. So, get our dough hook on our mixer. And this has to go for about 10 minutes until we're gonna stretch out the dough and it's gonna get very thin and not break apart. Almost forgot, we gotta add five grams of salt, which is about half a handful of salt. So after about 20 minutes in this thing, the dough, I mean, it's super hot. It's just super warm from all the friction. And if we look, when, when the dough stretches, it sort, of, it sort of sticks together, you see? That means, I mean, it's not, it's just about there, but this should be good enough. Cause this literally took about, imagine just doing, just kneading this for 20 minutes, how like labor intensive that is. And in regards to like how many calories you're actually getting back from this bread. That's why I think like in regards to natural indigenous preparations, I don't think we would have necessarily kneaded the dough for 10 or 20 minutes. I think we would, would have just made a sort of flat bread and just baked the bread in an oven as is, and then just consumed it. Would have been much denser and less, um, Less tasty, I guess. So this needs to proof for three hours. It means it needs to just rise for three hours. And then we'll knock it back down. I'm just going to take a wet rag and put it over it so the top doesn't dry out. And I'm just going to put it in a warm oven. And the yeast flourishes around 100 degrees, but it will die above 140. So uh, it's preferably below, uh, between 110 and 100 is perfect for the three hour fermentation. So uh, just before nine o'clock, we'll come back down and we'll uh, shape this into a loaf. Okay guys, so uh, eight made the bread. Uh, I could go to the tanning salon today. I don't think I'm going to. I uh, just don't feel up to it. I do I definitely want to go to the gym though. So maybe about an hour, an hour and a half. I'm going to upload some videos. I'm going to organize my computer, try to make sure my schedule's in check for the next few days. And then I guess we're going to go out, go to the gym, work out. Just pretty much organized my room, did a couple chores. Uh, I'm going to run out to the gym and maybe we'll get a couple more steaks that will throw on the grill outside. Uh, I just got to the gym. Uh, I pay a lot of money, man. I, I go to, um, I used to go to Lifetime Fitness in Manhattan. Uh, I probably should stop. Probably going to cancel the membership. It's like Equinox. It's like, uh, it's super expensive. I don't really go to the gym a lot anymore, so uh, I'm probably going to cancel it now that I, I'm probably going to start working uh, full time again. 
because uh, most of my past few jobs have been on and off but uh, I'm just gonna go I think I'm gonna do a little core work a little glute work and then I'll go for a run um, see how it affects my uh, my sleep tonight but uh, picked up some uh, I got some steaks again just a couple of strip steaks for t uh, till my meat order comes tomorrow but uh, I'm gonna go work out and I guys I wish I could film in this gym actually I got a warning already from filming in here so uh, my camera is going nowhere near that door so just finished my workout I, I don't think I was in there for more than half an hour the one thing I've noticed is that a lot of people ask if performance athletes are a problem on this diet and it's no real difference to, to me uh, the main difference I've noticed is as I started bartending and like fucking up my sleep hours between the candida and the bartending gig my aerobic capacity is like nothing like if I get a good night's sleep I can run like two miles seven minute mile pace it's not a big issue but like even just now running like half half a mile into it I'm like about to die so one thing I've noticed is definitely how sleep affects aerobic capacity and if this diet changes your sleeping patterns you probably will see a performance difference but in regards to strength endurance muscle stuff all depends entirely on sleep uh, so um, I'm gonna head home now throw the steaks back on the grill I don't think I'm gonna show you guys that it's gonna be too dark outside to film at least in my backyard it's gonna be too dark and I don't really want to I don't have any lights back there so I can do that. You guys want to? I know you carnivores are waiting to see how I make this bread, right? <laughs> All right, guys, back from the gym. Grilled up my steaks. First, I have the rest of that fish roe that's been sitting out all day. Eek. Still flounder roe, still okay. I don't know how I feel about this lamb fat. I'm not really that hungry for fat, at least. I have one bite. Even when I don't crave fat, this fat is always so tasty. Couple bites of fat, but I think I'm just gonna go for the steak. More raw steak for you guys.
I think my body is just like craving protein because of that fast I went on. It's just trying to maintain my lean body mass. Probably save this fat for tomorrow. Am I boring you guys to death yet? I'm just so out of it today.
this is what I mean by there's no hunger signal for protein. I ate about half, uh, like a quarter, I ate about like three quarters of a pound of fat earlier. And maybe I had like two, two and a half pounds of lamb shoulder earlier. Now I come home, I literally only have two more bites of lamb fat. I have the salmon roe, and now I'm just able to eat like strip steak and strip steak until my stomach is stuffed. So uh, this is what I mean by like, you guys need to be wary that if you eat, you know, three to four pounds of protein after a pound of fat, you know, I mean, I wasn't hungry to even sit down and eat this meal. So go figure. Now that I am a stuffed little Italian boy, <laughs> I'm honestly probably gonna have to take a nap. <laughs> All right, let me um, let me roll over. Just in time for my nap, the bread is ready. It's a proof, again. So, nothing exciting. Uh, doesn't actually look like it rose much, so we'll um okay. So traditionally, you know, modern ovens have steam, uh, so we need to use a vessel that has a lid. Here I have just have a regular pot that I put parchment paper in. And this is basically going to be the final vessel that our bread proofs in. Uh, most people use proofing baskets, uh, which I don't have because I don't really bake a lot of bread. But this is like the layman's, like what you would most likely have. 
So you can see like this is kind of like sponged up a bit. Sponged up a bit. Just want to knock it back down. Knock the air out. We just have to do the same thing as earlier pretty much. Uh, this just has to proof in 100, at 100 degrees preferably for three hours. So again, I'm gonna cover this with a damp towel and I'm gonna put this back in the oven. I just like to put the oven on low heat for a minute or two. Just warm it up. So it's just before nine o'clock right now. Uh, we're gonna come back at about midnight and uh, bake this bread. Guys, my sister is sleeping so I'm being quiet but oven as hot as possible. Mine's on 550. It's been on that for like 20 minutes. Take the bread. I just want to score it with a sharp knife. And this goes covered so that the top doesn't get too hard before it rises. If you don't put a lid on this and the oven doesn't have a lot of steam, what happens is it gets really, really hard on top and the bread stops rising. So, uh, the last loaf I baked was twice as big as that and it took about an hour. So I'm guessing this is gonna take a little bit over 30 minutes. So we'll come back down in 20 minutes, probably take the lid off and then let it finish. Look. Take the cover off, close a bit. I'm gonna give it like 10 more minutes and then I can go to bed. 1 a.m. right now. I woke up at like 9. Definitely not a short day, especially for not sleeping three hours the night before, but uh, see you guys in another few minutes. Alright guys, in about 10 minutes. Oh boy, look at that. You guys can't really see with the lighting. Pretty holding the smell to it. Uh, I'm going to let this rest overnight, but if you guys want to see how this turned out, check out my sourdough video. Aside of that, thank you guys for watching this whole video. Uh, let me know how you like these vlogs and how you think I can improve them. I don't think I'm going to show like a lot of the things I'm showing in the future, like uh, you know my hygiene, a lot of nuances I do every day. I might just more show the meals and the different things I'm doing every day. If you guys would like to support me, uh, please just share the video. A lot of the stuff I used in this video is in my Amazon shop. I will actually add the uh, I'll add the sourdough wheat bread and the mix and, and that stuff, the flours. Um, check out my website, frank-tefano.com. Uh, blog post up on there and everything. And if you guys would like to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one stuff, shoot me an email, frankatefano at gmail.com.